What's up everybody, it's your boy Duty back again with another video and this time of course we are taking a look at our boy DSP uh, new react to the Last of Us TV series episode 1 and I wanted to quickly show what Phil decided to do on his review so as you guys can see here it looks exactly like everything else he's ever done on DSP Gaming Nothing has ever changed. He doesn't have a layout. He doesn't have a nice little background like a TV, like, you know, like a movie st uh, studio or something. Something cool and you know, unique. Very similar to like what Angry Joe does. Let me show you what Angry... This is Phil. And now I want to show you what Angry Joe does. There it is. Look at that. Look at that. You see what he does? Angry Joe puts a little bit of effort and time to make his stuff look quality. It looks good and it doesn't take a lot of effort. What, what is that to grab a screenshot? Look at that. Look at that. He has the movie in the back. He has himself sitting there with his boys. He has some seats. It makes it look like it's a movie theater. That probably took him maybe 15 minutes to put together. And I'm pretty sure you can get one of his dents to do it. But no, Phil is too lazy. And this is the crap that he gives everyone right here. And then he thinks this is worth, you know, the four four bucks for a membership. And has the nerve to charge 20 bucks when it comes to, you know, for the premium stuff. It's utterly ridiculous. And it's been out for eight hours and he has 626 views. And uh, he has he has ads on it, which uh, remember he said he, he he's not going to rely or he's not going to make ad revenue on this. He's going to, you know, count on the fact that this is for members, right? So how does he justify memberships if yet they still have to see the ads? There is no functionality in here that says because you're a member, you don't have to see ads. Now they have to see ads when they view this crap. So Phil, you can't have it both ways. What you need to do is you need to shut off your ads, your, your ads on this. Since the members are paying you and they're the ones watching this, they should have the ability to skip these stupid ads. Anyway, just wanted to show the effort that Phil puts into everything, which is very minimal. Now, what I want to do. What's going on, everyone? Phil here. I want to show you what I did. Now, of course, I'm mocking our boy Phil, like I always do. But this took me literally five seconds to put together. <laughs> and what is it? I reconfigured his uh, little icon and, you know, called it DSP Refabs because I think that's more fitting. And then I added a cool little gift of Joel here, basically shushing Phil because Joel probably doesn't want to hear his take on the stupid movie. I mean, on the stupid show. But anyway, since he produced it, I feel like I'm obligated to watch it and see what the hell he has to say. And I'll provide a little bit of comment. I don't think I'm going to go through the whole thing because, of course, it is 17 minutes and you shouldn't spend 17 minutes reviewing one episode. Anyway, let's get into it. Here, and I'm doing something that originally I was not planning on doing, but because so many people over on my DSP gaming channel have been asking me about my thoughts on The Last of Us television. By the way, it's only 17 minutes because uh, I sped it up. If not, it would have been uh, longer than that. So let's let's keep going. Didn't show ever since it released over a month ago. And now finally I caved and got HBO Max because people ask me so much. I'm now going to give you my thoughts about the show. Now, so far, I've seen one episode, the pilot episode. It's an hour and 20 minutes long, and it sets the stage for essentially what's going to be the rest of the series. So what I'd like to do is give you my thoughts on that. Being as someone who played The Last of Us 1 originally when it came out, played it a year later on PS4, and then recently last year watched someone play The Last of Us Part 1 on PS5. The Last of Us was my game of the year pick the year that it was released. That's how well of a game I thought it was written. I thought the writing was so superb, amazing graphics, you know, a groundbreaking game. Felt to me like that was the best interactive story I've ever played in my life. And to this day, I still think it's one of the best gaming stories I've ever experienced. Even all this time later, you know, a decade later or so, okay? All that being said, The Last of Us TV series is a lot different. And it's weird because a lot of people had said to me they felt that this was like the closest adaptation of a video game to a show that was very true to the source material and it was really trying to respect it. I mean, I kind of get that. At the same time, the show has a lot of differences from the source material. And yes, Phil. It's called, uh, there's a term for it, but essentially it's, it's, it's the director's prerogative. They're not going to make the show exactly the same as a source material. Take, for example, Walking Dead. Walking Dead had a comic book series of nearly 100 episodes that they can draw from, right? And the uh, producers and um, 
uh, uh, TM, TM, whatever it is, the, the, the AMC channel, the, the folks, they decided to take a good amount of the source material, but adapt it based on the show and make it slightly different based on a whole host of stuff you get. I mean, yes, you get your hardcore uh, people that like the source material, right? But that's typically a smaller population. When you're doing TV shows, movies, you have to kind of, you know, you have to, you kind of have to make it uh, palliable for most people. For example, Walking Dead, the comic book, it really focused on the zombies. Really, really focused on the zombies. While the TV show focused more on the relationships, uh, the people, you know, that was the main, that was the main focus. And then they sprinkled in zombie attacks and all that stuff. So Last of Us is going to do the same exact thing. I actually watched first two episodes and I, I found it enjoyable. Uh, yes, there were some different things, but that's perfectly fine. Uh, I, I, I know going in, it's not going to be exactly the same as the source material, Phil. So it's not, it's not a big thing, Phil. First, when I was watching this episode, it's hour and 20 minutes long. And the amount of ground that's covered in the hour and 20 minutes, but if you were playing the game, it would probably be three, four hours, okay? It's fast moving. But the weird part about that is they linger on parts and kind of extend parts that don't really make much sense. So to give you some perspective here. Yes, Phil, the reason why they do that is because it's probably going to tie into a bigger plot, you know, a bigger uh, a bigger part of the show. Every Every TV show does the same thing. They focus on one point, they make it a big thing. You kind of sit there and wonder, okay, why are they focused on this? It doesn't make much sense. And then eventually they have a big payoff. Every big, every TV show does that. I mean, just, I know you didn't watch Game of Thrones, but look at Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones would put something into, say, the first season and you'd sit there and you'd be like, oh, okay, well, all right. And then two seasons later, it will tie back to that. And if you're a person that watches the show and you know the show, you say to yourself, oh, okay, I get it. I, I know why they, oh, that's very interesting. It ties back to season one. That's what they're trying to do here, Phil. And of course, you know, I, I guess, you know, you have your attention span is too short and you won't remember it. And then when it happens, you'll sit there and be like, oh, I don't get it. What happened? Because you didn't remember what happened in season one. And that five minute episode, you know, a five minute portion of an episode, you know, it, it's 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 called paying attention, listening to what's happening and then taking in certain bits of information that might be interesting. And hopefully it will pay off eventually. Sometimes it doesn't pay off. Sometimes they don't even bring it up again. But a good amount of time, if it's something that they spend extensive time on, it's going to it's going to have a bigger payoff later. In the original game, the whole setup of Joel and his daughter having some interactions, then all of a sudden the cordyceps virus breaks out, starts infecting everyone around, and Joel comes home and grabs his daughter, tosses her in a car, they're driving with, with uh, the brother Tommy, and they're trying to escape town, and then they go into town and everything's going to hell, and everything goes wrong, right? Without spoiling or whatever. Basically, that segment is incredibly fast moving and action packed, it's good at building drama, but everything is just going to hell in a handbasket so fast. In the show, they spent at least an extra 10 minutes building up everyone's normal life. In fact, there's characters added, like a next door neighbor who's an elderly woman, um, who then ends up becoming the first person overcame with the cordyceps, you know, uh, fungus. It's weird that they- Phil, it's called building lore. You have to build lore. Every good show does it. Every good show does it, Phil. And I guess you just wanted to see uh, the, the video game on a big screen. And it doesn't play that way, Phil. It, it, it doesn't. I, I don't know why you how you find it so difficult to understand that. But it just goes to show that you really don't follow movies or shows or really read or get into source material and understand how TV series uh, are built. You, you just don't. And yeah, okay. I mean, if you're going to do kind of these rack fills, I think you should really read up and understand like, um, uh, the intent of what the show is a little bit more, you know, and what hopefully they're trying to get at and, and, and understand a little bit how TV series and dramas like this actually work. Uh, the main thing is they're trying to build lore. They're trying to build character arcs so that it will some, eventually it will pay off later on. And I guess you don't understand that. I mean, the, the one point you just brought up right now about the woman being, I guess the first, whatever. Yeah. You probably don't see that in the video game because in the video game, it's just chaos and they're trying to run. And that's all you see with the TV show. You have a little bit more time. You can spend developing those, um, those plot points, you know, like, oh, this was the origin. This is how it happened. You know what I mean? And it, what it does is it gets people interested 
And then they start doing research, they start doing online searches, they dig into forums to figure out, hey, why, why did this happen? And it engage, you know, they engage and they get more interested in it and they become fans of the show. So that, that's kind of how it works. We build it up that much. I'm not actually even sure it added that much to it to do that. In addition, there's some weird distinct changes. For example, Joel doesn't have an accent anymore. And you're in the game, he has kind of a Southern drawl accent. He doesn't have that in the show. I don't know what the purpose of removing that was, but they removed it. Uh because the person playing Joel is actually Spanish, Portuguese, Spanish, whatever, whatever uh, Pascal is. He is of Spanish descent. So you're going to probably hear more of a Spanish accent than a Southern Texas type of accent. Uh, his daughter is uh, of mixed race now. And you might say, oh, it's a big deal. I don't think it is a big deal. I don't think it matters at all. Who cares what race his daughter is or the characters are? The, the distinct thing, though, is that it's a change they made that doesn't really add anything or change anything. If it's not an issue, then why do you even bother bringing it up? They may show uh, something of his wife later on, and she may be of mixed race, and her daughter is of mixed race. What's the problem, Phil? It's not it's not that deep. It's not that serious being that there that his daughter really doesn't play uh you know an integral part in the game either. So what what why is this an issue? The plot's still the same. The characters are pretty close to the representations in the game, so why make that change? It doesn't seem to serve much of a purpose at all, okay? This is a running theme that I'm gonna reference later. So Yes, Phil, it's HBO. It's called diversity. They want to diversify the cast. That's what they want to do. It's they did it in Game of Thrones. They're doing it now in House of the Dragons, where they actually now have a black uh, family from Valeria that ties to the Targaryens, which is something new. It's not in the books. It's not in any other source material, but they did it to uh, foster diversity in the show. And there is it's, it's not a problem, Phil. Once they go through this you know, relatively slow build, and then all hell breaks loose, all right? I like the, the the build scene where they're driving the car, they're going downtown, everything's going crazy. I like that it's very close to the game. What I didn't like is they changed the, the time frame when the, the show takes place, that this, apparently the outbreak happened in 2003, so it's the George W. Bush era. Um, they even referenced, oh no, it's a terrorist, because, you know, 9-11 happened just a couple years before this. And the weird thing about it, too, are the planes crashing. In the original game, basically what happened was this Cordyceps virus kind of spread slowly throughout the world and took over different regions. Here, apparently, if you're to believe what the, what the, the show is telling you, it's worldwide all happened at once. How on earth were people who were down on the ground level of Earth affected in exactly the same time as people who were flying in airplanes, so all the airplanes crashed out of the air simultaneously? It doesn't even make sense. They're carriers, Phil. It, <laughs> it's just like the movie uh, uh, World War Z where uh brad pitt's character was in the plane and apparently there was a person that was infected and they turned and they started attacking people and uh it it you know it just spread like crazy and something happened i don't remember what but the the, the door was open he ended up flying out of the plane or the plane crashed or whatever the case is that's probably what ended up happening people were infected uh they may have not shown symptoms symptoms they were on the plane and it just started spreading like wildfire. It got to the um, the pilots and that's how the planes crash. It's it, it's not that difficult, Phil. Like what? Was there a giant fart cloud of fungus that just engulfed the Earth's ozone layer and then zoop and hit everyone at once? And we, everyone got infected. It just doesn't really make sense at all. Um, I understand they were going for these real epic scenes of dramatic effect with the planes crashing or whatever at the same time everyone's being overtaken and infected but it's it's, it's confusing in addition the quarter of zombies are different in, in the show they're they're violent and eating you now not to say they don't bite you in the game but i would say the real risk in the game is violence right the infected are trying to bludgeon you murder you rip you apart yeah bite you but here it's like they're cannibals it's kind of like they're traditional cannibal zombies um and that was kind of weird to me because i don't remember seeing a lot of that in the game i do remember a lot of people dying but i don't remember seeing people just being eaten alive like a traditional cannibal zombie so it's another chain that's interesting, but doesn't necessarily change much, okay? It just makes it more violent, and it's a slight change, Phil. It, God. All right, I think I'm ending the review here because it's going long. I don't want to review this whole thing. He is utterly terrible at this. You just point out the scene, you talk about it, you give your view on it, and you move on, Phil. That's kind of a react or a review. A review of what you do with TV shows. And there's no reason for you to go on for 17 minutes. There's no reason. You can do this in eight to 10 minutes, Phil. Now, the one thing I wanna look at is I think 
Uh, hold on one second. So I want to go to his other channel, to his DSP gaming channel. And he did this on his podcast. So what I want to see is, did he just copy and paste? And if he did, then he lied because he actually said he recorded this last night. Um, and he uploaded it. So hold on. Let me go check just real quick. just wanted to start a business. One second, one second. Hold on. Watch the Batman animated story. Um, the infected now seem to act like zombies, like typical movie zombies, which they don't in the sh in the game. In the game, when you get overwhelmed by the cordyceps. Okay. So it looks like what he did is he regurgitated the same exact thing he talked about on his podcast, but he did record it. So it's actually him, uh, not just he, he clipped it from his, his podcast, which I, I now thinking about it, that probably would have been the best thing to do is just cut this segment from the podcast and just posted it on your on your um, on your DSP reacts. It just it just it makes no sense. And this isn't a review it's just it's not this is not a reaction it's not a review it's just you regurgitating what you hate or what well, why you why you find it annoying um and the other thing too is maybe build the star system like say oh it's a four out of five or it's a nine out of ten or an eight out of ten or i recommend he does nothing of that he just simply just rambles on about why why the last of us tv series is not the last of us game it's just bad. All right, I'm gonna save you. Um, I'm gonna save you some time. Don't don't bother watch. It's terrible. And actually, the funny thing is, is uh, uh, I think I put way more effort into um, I put way for more effort into my video than Phil did. I at least got a, a gif of Joe, you know, basically telling Phil to be telling Phil to be quiet. And uh, I rebranded him as DSP Refabs. So, by the way, that's a that's a channel that I created called DSP Refabs. Uh, I'm going to be bringing it out soon once I get some channel art and stuff like that. But it's essentially our boy DSP fapping uh, in different locations to different historical figures to different events in the world. And it should be a lot of fun. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Peace out.